Clouds, hazy sun and cool on Friday with some drizzle possible. Good Thursday night, East Tennessee. David Aldrich, Captain Accurate here from the Captain Accurate Weather Command Center. Well, we hit 59 degrees today. We had some rain. We hit 58 in Oak Ridge. We had some rain. I was expecting a high of 62. The closest to that was, I guess, Athens at 61. But most of us were in the mid to upper 50s today. La Follette and Warburg, for example, and Kingston hit 57. Our rainfall amounts did vary quite a bit. I put an arrow there for Knoxville, officially 0.45. And if you tack on what we had last night, which was 0 0.05, we had a grand total of a half inch. So a half inch of rain in Knoxville, not bad. It helps, right? Every little bit helps. The high was 59. That put us two degrees below normal. The record high goes back to 1993 and 1879. Could you have any polar opposite dates there? That's pretty far apart. But 80 has been achieved twice in our recorded history. We've been as cold as 20 on this date as well. But the rain has basically pushed out. There's still some clouds. There will be some fog and maybe even some drizzle as the lingering showers are trying to work their way through the Tri-Cities. But it's interesting to note how much rain officially 0.45 today, Knoxville, and 1.40 in Oak Ridge. Now think about that, almost an inch more than what Knoxville had. So it really depended on where you are. You can see there were some one inch totals there what, around the Follett, uh, parts of Scott County. This is Doppler estimated, but there were pockets of heavy rain. Every drop, I guess, would help given the fact it's been dry. We're going to look at the drought monitor here in just a moment. But let me jump ahead. As we've now passed 830, you can see virtually dry. There are some specks of green, it looks like, towards Sneedville, maybe in Hancock County and up toward the Tri-Cities. But outside of that, this is what's been happening over the last eight hours. It's been dancing across. That's why I left a 30% chance for some lingering showers. Most of that's now trying to work out. Work out of the picture, but if you rewind the tape, you can see there's a flow coming down from the northwest, so it's affecting areas from Jefferson City back perhaps toward Rogersville in the last couple of hours. By the way, Marcos.com, a great place to go if you're hungry and you haven't had dinner. Uh, maybe you want something delivered. Hardin Valley, Farragut, they've got great locations there. They're located in Maryville, Fountain City, Halls and Oak Ridge, and Middlebrook Pike, Ebenezer Road. And if you're within those areas, they probably deliver as well. But check them out. They've got a magnificent pizza called the Magnifico for less than $10. That looks so good right now. And the Pizzoli, which I love at lunch, $6 or less, $5.99 to be precise. For a limited time only, my favorite is the top picture there, pepperoni and sausage. You get both, and you have some dipping sauces. It's delicious. By the way, Marcos.com, great sponsor of Captain Accurate Weather. You can see rain is stretching across Pennsylvania. All the rain that's now in eastern Virginia was affecting us this morning and virtually quiet across the heartland, but there are some freeze concerns, it looks like, in the Midwest. Tropical Storm Sarah, the big story now in the tropics. Can you believe it? It's the 14th of November. I said this would shut down around the 15th, that's tomorrow, and I have to eat crow because it's going to stick around a little beyond tomorrow because this is Tropical Storm Sarah with winds of 40. Now, just yesterday, this looked like it was going to head toward Cancun, but now it's going to miss Cancun. It's moving further south. That plays a big role because if the open waters, if this storm, Sarah, uh, parks over open water and just grazes Cancun, it has potentially more time to gather its strength, to flex its muscles, and work its way toward uh, Florida. But as it stands now, this looks like it's going to cross over land a lot longer. You can see that uh, illustrated from their cone, the National Hurricane Center cone. Because by the time we hit, say, uh, maybe this weekend and beyond, uh, we're dealing with, uh, looks like, again, winds are going to be dropping off. And it will get torn apart over land for sure. But no coloring here. There's no more interests from the National Hurricane Center. Let's hope this could be the last. But the potential track, as I had outlined yesterday, would take it over the northern part of the Yucatan, which is now trending south of, uh, south of Cancun. But that might have curled back. They're going to get leftovers from Sarah, whatever, in Florida. But it may not have the impact that it could have had otherwise. And some of the spaghetti plots, that's these little noodles, they do push it further south of Cancun and then do a curly cue back toward the Sunshine State. So they still have to watch for the potential for some tropical rains headed to the Sunshine State in about, say, five to six, seven days. Tropical names, by the way, Sarah, on track, but I don't see Tony forming. We may be stopping with Sarah. It, uh, we're talking about the headlines. Few showers linger tonight. Some drizzle possible on Friday and mostly sunny on Saturday. Of course, there's a big game on Saturday, which we'll touch on. But look at this. Boy, after having only 0 .08 uh, all 31 days of October and the third driest October on record, it's nice to maybe play catch up because now on November, we have an arrow in November of 1.29. 
and have clearly with 1.40 today in Oak Ridge, uh, they, they had about an inch more than we did. But even still, 1.29, we're chipping away, trying to get back up to even, which is four and a quarter for the month of November. The drought monitor did come out today, but uh, take it with a grain of salt because the data was cut off on Tuesday, so it does not, I repeat, does not reflect the rain from today. But if you wanted a snapshot of what, how bad it was, say, on Tuesday, well, you're looking at it. It shows that abnormally dry in areas in yellow. That would include Maryville, Louisville, Sevierville, Dandridge, Rogersville, Morristown, White Pine, and Rutledge. Our friends in Tazewell are abnormally dry, as would be Kyles Ford and Sneedville. But once you jump into Brown, and I'm looking at Jellicoe, looking at Eulafawet, Carival, you're under the moderate drought. And then it gets level three worse for severe. That's the orange. We love orange in here, East Tennessee, but not when it comes to the drought legend, because that means Kingston, Harriman, and Rockwood are level three, as is Crab Orchard and most, if not all, of Cumberland County under Crossville, the, uh, the severe drought. So that's level three out of five possible categories or levels. Uh, extreme in red would be featured there, and some areas are exceptionally uh, bad, and that's in parts of the country in Ohio, parts of West Virginia, and parts of the west so that's the drought monitor in a nutshell uh, every drop we get certainly does benefit us in the long run future cast shows this storm system off the coast high pressure comes in we might get some drizzle tomorrow but outside of that a beautiful day is shaping up for saturday if you're headed down to athens georgia for the big game they'll be in the low to mid 50s about 54 for kickoff that's my expectation cooling into the upper 40s by the end of the game but clear skies sunday i do have lots of sunshine more high clouds for the afternoon as this front moves across Missouri, Illinois, and so it goes. But expect dry weather on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. But the rainy weather, it looks like it's going to march in here quicker on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. There's some fog potential tomorrow morning as well. So for tonight, we're down to 49, mostly cloudy. Few showers may linger, and some pockets of drizzle could actually persist on your Friday. Tonight, we're down to 48 for Newport, Cosby, Del Rio, 49 for Knoxville, uh, Marble City, Scruffy City, Knox Vegas, however you want to slice it, and about 44 for Crater City, that's Middlesbrough, Bell County, 44, 43 for Crossville. Tomorrow we're expecting a high of 61. Some may only get in the upper 50s, that's okay, but I'm expecting 61 drizzle possible winds out of the north, northeast, 5 to 10, 5 to 10. So here's the expectation. If you're in Morristown, 59. If you're in Warburg, 58. But if you're somewhere near Kingston, Rock, uh, Rockwood, Oak Ridge, Clinton, I think you've got a good chance of at least hitting 60 or 61. That's why I put those numbers a little bit higher there. And 56 for our friends in Crossville. Here's your Captain Accurate Weather Authority forecast for Knoxville, East Tennessee. 64 is warmer on Saturday. We're warming up in the mid to upper 60s Sunday and Monday. I have us flirting with 70 before the rain comes in. The rain should be arriving probably by 10 or 11 in the morning. So you're going to get a few hours of dryness before the periods of rain take hold. And that should kick in again Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and then try to pull out of here in spots on Wednesday. But the, the, the key here, if there's one symbol I want to draw your attention to, it's Thursday's down arrow. Because that 62 conceivably could be around midnight or perhaps 5 a.m. We'll determine that when we get closer. But it's Tumble City, my friend. That means in the end, what we're going to see is the tempers get so cold and abrupt. People say, man, we, we went right to winter. And we will. We'll go right to winter. And some will say, I didn't expect that. I wish I had my fireplace ready to go or that, you know, fireplace with the light switch ready to go. Maybe firewood would be a time to get that because it's going to be a quick arrow down. And it's, boy, is it going to be down. Some of you are like, man, it's cold. We're talking lows in the 20s, highs in the 30s, near 40. It could be brutal, uh, brutal brutally cold. And it's not that far away. I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up. By the way, you can keep track of all of this using the Captain Accurate Weather app. Now with power outages. Now with the drought monitor. And so much more, including air quality alerts. I could go on and on. Improved satellite mapping. Uh, but I won't keep going on. It's all there. And all the other goodies you had and probably are used to using in the, in the past. Pete Michaels traffic. Uh, weather and traffic perfect together. Just search the two words Captain Accurate at the App Store and Google Play. Well, my name is David Aldrich. We'll see you here next time. I hope that you'll have a great weekend. That's the forecast. Oops, i am jumped back in back. I, my cameras are all out of sorts. I'm just so excited that it's almost Friday. I'll be live streaming in the morning at 640. You can always watch it later on at your convenience. We'll see you here next time. Take care.